What is going on everybody? Welcome to yet another OpenCV with Python tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be talking a little bit more about feature matching. In the past we've shown template matching where you can apply a threshold and be, you know, slightly dynamic, but not very. Uh, especially if things are at a different angle or different lighting or different rotation and so on. So in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about feature matching, which will allow us to start with a template and have an image just like we did before. Only this time, our template and the image can have different lighting, different angles, and different rotation. So as an example, I'm going to use the following images. So one is just a pile of pillows and dog toys. The other one is just one of those pillows. And the template image is actually a different uh, angle, some, a little bit different lighting, a different rotation. So we're going to try to match this pillow to that pile of pillows and, and only get that match there. Now, uh, you can use your own images if you want. I highly encourage you to do that. If you want to use those image, these the same images I'm using, you can go to pythonprogram.net. There's a link in the description of this video for this specific tutorial, and you can get the images there. So the way that we do this is kind of throw, through a form of brute force matching. It's going to match everything. It's going to sort the matching based on the best matches, basically, but it's going to make a lot of plausible matches. So um, you'll see what I mean towards the end when we show it, but it's basically a form of brute force. So we're going to go ahead and import uh, one more thing here. We've got CV2 and NumPy as, uh, as NP, but import matplot, matplotlib.pyplot as PLT as well. Now we're going to load in both our images. So image one is going to be cv2.imread, and we're going to read in open cv-feature-matching-template.jpg as zero. Then we're going to take that, paste, and this will be image two. And then um, instead of template, we just re rename this image. And those are just my names. You can use your own image, of course. So there we go, we have our images and all that. Now we're going to define our little detector of similarities. So orb equals cv2.orb underscore create. Um, now we're going to create our key points and their descriptors. So kp1 is going to be equal, or actually kp1 des1 is equal to orb.detect and compute image one, none. Actually, it needs to be capital N. Okay, so take that, copy, paste, two, two, and two. So those are our key points and our descriptors. Now, we're going to find the key points and their descriptors uh, with our orb detector. So BF equals uh, CV2 dot BF matcher. And CV2 dot norm underscore hamming this is just the method we're going to use and cross check is going to equal true so that's our bf matcher object just being saved as bf um, now we're going to find the matches and then we're going to sort them based on the basically their distance or um accuracy maybe or confidence I, i'm trying to i have a hard time finding a good word on that but anyway matches now equals whoops equals bf dot match des one des two and then when we'll sort them uh, matches equals sorted matches and then the key for the sort will be lambda lambda x x dot distance. Okay, so we've got matches of the descriptors and we've now sorted them basically from most likely a match to least likely a match. So then uh, we're prepared to show this. So image three equals cv2.draw matches from image one, kp1, image two, kp2 matches. And then here you can decide how many you want. 10 is probably the safe bet. Uh, none and flags will just say two. And then plt.mshow, which three. And then we'll do a plt.show here. And this will show us the first 10 matches. So it might be a little hard to see on the video here. Um, 
But sure enough, we have matched relatively accurately. We've got the uh, butthole here, apparently. Um, so it's just a good idea to find find the matches. So like this purple line does indeed go to the tail. This little rock here, sure enough, goes to the same rock. Uh, this spot appears to go to the same spot. And then we've got like a little match on the ear, which again, as well, is a good match. So that's good. But what happens if we, um, let's allow for more than 10. Let's do 30. Well, we load up 30 and we're probably going to see, yeah, we've got a few matches that aren't mm, quite what we wanted, right? So most of these are good, yeah, the pillow, but then we start matching like this exact spot on this eye and it tracks all the way back to here. And they're basically, that little spot, yeah, it's, it's like basically identical, but not right. <laughs> okay, so most of the matches still went to the pillow object. So then you could like edge detect or something, I don't know, and come up with, okay, the, this pillow object has the most match. Um, you could also like, I don't know, light up the pillow more, just keep, you know, say the most likely, you know, location for the pillow is right here or something like that. Um, but anyway, we've, we've got a few false, uh, false positives going on. So if you let too many come through, you're going to probably have a problem, but at least with like 10, that was pretty good. And, and as long as you keep the number low, you probably really will be fairly accurate. And if your image is a high, really high quality image, uh, you could probably match even more than that, especially if both of your objects are like really high quality and have a lot of features to them. Um, but this pillow didn't really have too many features and then all these other things have all kinds of little designs and stuff on them. So it wasn't too surprising that matches were made. So um, I wonder what if we said instead of zero, zero, we said one and I'm just looking to see if that'll actually even work right out of the box. Shouldn't do these live tests. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, so here's a good example. I don't know. Hopefully you guys have been following since the beginning. Uh, but matplotlib displays things in RGB and CV displays BGR. So what has happened here is um, this is matplotlib trying to display as RGB, but being fed BGR data. But anyway, that's okay. Uh, let's try to make a four, more matches and just see if adding the color makes any significant difference. I see a lot of false positives anyways. So those same kind of false matches are still being made. Bummer. Anyway, um, so that's it for uh, the feature matching. And the next tutorial what we're going to do is return back to the idea of foreground extraction. This time what we're going to do actually is extract a foreground based on motion. So things that are moving, we can actually pull them to the front or say, hey, that's where the activity is. Let's zero in exactly on that. So um, that's what we're going to be talk talking about in the next tutorial. If you have questions or whatever on this tutorial, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching.